Life is fragile. We do not know when we will die. People die all the time with unfinished business, with unspoken goodbyes. If you were to die today, are you 100% sure that you would go to heaven? One thing is certain, we will all leave this body one day. I want to show you how to make sure that your soul goes to heaven when you die. Here is the roadmap to heaven from wherever you are in life. There are a few things that you must understand and believe to be able to go to heaven when you die. First, you must understand that we have all broken God's law and that the punishment we deserve is an eternal hell. In Romans chapter 3, the Bible reads, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Now, righteous means perfect. And no one is perfect. No one is good enough to get to heaven on their own. No one deserves to go to heaven. In Romans chapter 3, verse 23, the Bible reads, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Sin is when we break God's law. Just like when you run a stop sign, or if you murder someone, there is a punishment for breaking laws. Do you know what the punishment is for breaking God's law? In Romans chapter 6, the Bible reads, For the wages of sin is death. Wages are something that we earn, like a minimum wage or an hourly wage. Because we have broken God's law, there is a punishment that we have earned. This is death. And it's not just the death of our body. There is a part of us that will last forever. It's our soul and our spirit. In Revelation 20, the Bible reads, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. If you die and go to hell, it's a second death. It's like death for the soul, but it's in everlasting fire. Hell is forever. In Revelation 14, and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night. Once you get in hell, there is no way out. You are tortured forever. You're on fire forever. Now God doesn't want you to go to hell, but not everyone gets to go to heaven. In Revelation 21, we see a list of some of the people that deserve help. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers. Now, a murderer certainly deserves the punishment of hell. And you may say, well, I'm not a murderer. I haven't killed anybody. Look what else he says. And whoremongers, that's people that sleep around that aren't married. And sorcerers. Sorcery is magic or witchcraft, like Harry Potter. And idolaters, that's people that worship statues as God. But look what he says next. And all liars. Uh-oh, we've all told lies. And all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. That's the bad news. We all deserve hell. We've all broken God's law in different ways. We've all lied. And the punishment for breaking God's law by lying is the second death. Death and hell. Here's the good news. The gospel. We must believe that Jesus died, was buried, and rose again from the grave as a payment for our sins. In Romans 5, the Bible reads, But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were yet sinners, even though we all still sin, we can be saved from hell. 
You remember this verse, Romans chapter 6, verse 23, for the wages of sin is death. We have earned hell because we've broken God's law. Look at the second half. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So we deserve hell, but God wants to give us a gift. Now, a gift or a present is something that is totally free. You cannot earn a gift. You cannot buy a gift. It's something that's given to you. If someone gives you a gift, they cannot expect something in return. If I were to give you a free Bible, I cannot expect you to go to church to receive that free Bible. The Bible must be totally free. Notice he says, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. God wants to give you eternal life as a gift. Now, how long does everlasting life last for? It lasts forever. Another verse that teaches the gift of God is Ephesians chapter two. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We are saved through faith. He says, to be saved, it is not of your good works. For us to be saved, it is not of our good works. It is what we choose to put our trust in, your faith. You must choose to believe that God has paid for the gift and is giving it to you. So what do you have to believe to get the free gift of everlasting life? That Jesus died for your sins and rose again. This question was asked in Acts chapter 16. They said, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It does not say you have to be a good person. It does not say you have to work your way to heaven. It says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Now the title, the Lord Jesus Christ, is a very important distinction. By being Lord, that means that he is God. Jesus was his name, and Christ means Messiah or Savior. The Messiah was promised to come and take away the sins of the world. You must believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and by being the Son of God, that means that he is God the Son. The Bible teaches that we are made in God's image. We have a body, we have a soul, and we have a spirit. Well, God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one God. In Acts chapter 7, there was a man named Stephen, and he was stoned to death for preaching the gospel. And as he died, he saw heaven opened, and he saw Jesus as God in heaven. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. The name that he called God was Lord Jesus. You must believe that Jesus is God to be saved from your sins. Only God can forgive sin and only God can raise the dead. One of the most famous verses in the entire Bible is John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. To have everlasting life with God in heaven, you must believe in him. And look at verse number 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned. That means you will not be condemned for your sin. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. You must stop believing you can be saved by any other way than Jesus. You are not saved by your good works. You are not saved by repenting from your sins. You are not saved by a baptism. We deserve the second death, death and hell. But Jesus paid it all. He took that punishment. He died. He was buried. 
and he resurrected again for our sins. Many people will ask, well, doesn't the Bible teach we must repent from our sins to be saved? Repenting of sins is a work in God's eyes, and good works cannot save our soul. In Jonah chapter 3, it says, God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way. The Bible is teaching that when God sees us turn our life around or turn from sin, God calls that works. And if you remember, we are not saved by works. It is the gift of God, not of works. We are saved by the gift of God, and that is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It is not through repenting of sin. The word repent itself just means to turn. It means to change your mind or change what you're trusting in for salvation. In this regard, if you believe you're saved because you were baptized as a child, you must repent of trusting in your baptism and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you believe you're saved because you stopped doing certain sins, you must repent of trusting in your works and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. In Mark chapter 1, look what Jesus says. The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. He says, change your mind and trust in me as God and Savior. In Titus chapter 3, he says, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. In 1 Thessalonians 1, it points out how ye turned to God from idols, to serve the living and true God. If you're a Mormon, you need to turn from that God. If you're a Jehovah's Witness, you need to turn from that God. If you're a Muslim, you need to turn from that God and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. In Acts 26, it says that they should repent and turn to God. Repent means to turn. The question is, turn from what to what? If you believe you can be saved without trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to repent of that. In Acts chapter 11, the Bible reads, And the hand of the Lord was upon them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. Now that's biblical repentance. Just as Jesus taught, Repent ye, and believe the gospel. Repenting of sins is works in God's eyes, and good works in the flesh cannot save our soul from the punishment of sin. Only trusting in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ will save your soul from the punishment of hell that we deserve. One last thing that you must believe. This gift is so good that it lasts forever. You do not have to work to get it, and you do not have to work to keep it. God has already paid for all of our sins. You cannot lose your salvation. It is everlasting. You must believe that. In John 5, Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. If you believe on Jesus now, you are saved now, and you will not be condemned for your sin. You are passed from death and hell unto eternal life. God has promised the free gift of everlasting life, and he will not break his promise. He will not take away your salvation. Titus 1, he says, in hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began. God has promised you everlasting life if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and he will not take it away from you if you sin again. Those sins were paid for. In John chapter 10, Jesus says, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. God says, 
I've got you. God says, I will protect you. You are secure in your salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. He will hold on to you, and no one can pluck you out of his hand, not even yourself. The verse we started with, Romans 3.10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one, right? I'm not righteous, you're not righteous, I'm not perfect, no one is perfect. In Romans 10.10, 10, the Bible reads, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. This is teaching in your heart. If you believe these things and you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as God and Savior, the only way to get to heaven, that he paid for all of your sins and he's offering you a totally free gift that lasts forever, it's like you are perfect right now. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. In verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. In summary, we have all sinned by breaking God's law and the punishment we deserve is everlasting hellfire. Thank God he died for our sins and was buried and rose again the third day to pay off our sin debt and now we must choose to trust in his free gift and be saved forever. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you have changed your mind about how to be saved and you believe the gospel, you should tell God you trust in him and call upon him. You can pray this simple prayer, but mind you, the prayer doesn't save you must believe this in your heart. Dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner and that I deserve hell. I believe that you died for my sins and rose again. Please save me and give me everlasting life. I am only trusting in you, Jesus, not my good works. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now, if you have believed this, you're saved. And if you're saved, I would like to send you a free Bible. You need to start reading your Bible. You need to start praying to God on a daily basis. And you need to get in a local church. You need to hear preaching so that you can grow. The Bible teaches that God's Holy Spirit will now come and live inside of your heart to help you understand the Bible, to help you know what His will for your life is have any questions, please reach out. My name is Pastor Adam Fannin at Law of Liberty Baptist Church. God bless you.